Hi, my name is William Harley. I'm currently working as a character TD at SideFX Software. In this masterclass, I'll be showing you how to set up a basic rig in Apex using components, which are scripts that we'll use to add nodes, set data on them, and connect them to each other in the rig graph. We'll also have a look at how to set up subgraphs, which are tools similar to HDAs that contain more complex logic that you can use to simplify your rig with. I will also go over the chicken and dive deeper into the component scripts that I'm using in that rig. Okay, so let's build a, a little rig just to show how components and subgraphs work before we get to the chicken rig. So I'm going to create a tube. I'm going to set it to x axis, radius of one, and height of two, and then create some more rows. Then I'm going to create a skeleton. And I'm just going to snap the grid. So let's set that. And I'm going to select all of them. So press S, select all of them, and orient the joints. And then I'm going to rename them. So I'm going to select them. Root. Mid. And top. Okay. I'm going to do a capture proximity. Uh, prox. Okay. And then something that I like to do is I like to add an add node um, and get rid of the geometry but keep the points. Um, this will this will make it so that the joint capture proximity will look at the points rather than the primitives for the capture. So it creates a little bit of a smoother transition between the, the different joints. So I'm going to just change the drop off and you can see, um, you'll see better once we add a bone deform. So I'll just add a bone deform so we can just check the weights uh, before we move on. So you've got my rig pose. Okay. And then I'm just going to move these points. So just uh, turn grid snapping off, move this up a little bit. Move that guy down. And you can see that the the weights are are, are way more uh, are way stronger around the joints uh, than they would be if if I didn't add the add node. So if I remove this, you'll see it's got quite um, strange weighting, but it's because it's taking the primitives into account. Okay, so over here, I'm just going to increase that uh, that drop off a little bit just to smoothen it out a bit. And something else that you can also do is just add a smooth node. Um, that'll that'll keep the the edge weights the same, but it'll smooth them a little bit. So if I add a bone capture uh, attribute here, and I smooth it a bit. I mean, while we're looking at the thing, so if I smooth it a bit, you can see the tips are still staying constrained to the or weighted to the joint tips. Okay, okay. But now that we have a mesh that's um, that's captured and we've got a skeleton, let's pack them into folders. So now I've got my uh, pack folders node, and I'm going to pack my capture mesh and my capture skeleton in there. So base dot shape for the mesh and base dot scale for the skeleton. Okay, now the auto rig node. So or well, the auto rig component node will set up my my rig graph for me. So what uh, what this node does is it'll run component scripts and a component script is just a script that will build the rig and add nodes and plug nodes into each other inside the rig graph. So what I want to do here is I want to take the skeleton data and I want to take the mesh data and I want to build a rig from, from that um, using these components. So I'm going to say fk transform. The fk transform will set up a fk rig on the skeleton for me. So as you can see here, I've got my transforms. Let me just untemplate the tube. Um, I've got my I've got my transforms and they are moving the skeleton around like any other FK rig. It's rotation and translation. Let's have a look at the, the rig graph. I'm gonna just unpack this quickly. So unpack folder and you have to unpack it because these are all pack primitives. 
So if you have a look um, at the Apex network view, so these are all packed primitives. So if I just view that network, uh, the Apex network view, I'm not going to see anything. So I really need to isolate that rig, that rig graph. So I'm going to select unpack folder. And by default, it's set to star, which means it'll unpack everything. So you're going to get some of this, um, this noise in there, which is coming from the, the, the mesh itself. So what we want to do is we want to just specify the rig. So I'm going to say rig. And now you'll get a nice clean, clean network view that just shows you the rig graph. Okay, so I'm going to pin this so we can have a look at this while we make some changes on the auto rig component. But essentially what this is doing is it's just recreating what I have here. So it's taking my skeleton, but it's creating transform objects instead of joints. And these transform objects will represent my joint positions. So it'll grab the rest position from the skeleton and set that on here. And it will parent them to each other just like the skeleton is. So on the parameters, you can see these parameters have been exposed. Um, if I look at the auto rig component node, uh, you can see over here, I've got my parameters that are exposed. So my it's either my translates, my rotates or scale will be promoted. And if they're promoted, you will see that um, it's visible in the viewport. So I can actually select it here. You can see I've got my translate and my rotate. So if I get rid of rotation, you can see now I only have translate. And over here, you can see only the translate for each of the transform objects are exposed. So these transforms then all go to a point transform node. Um, and it's using this name to set the joint name. So it's, it's basically setting the joint uh, transform based on name. So it'll take the skeleton data, uh, deform it, and then output that to base skeleton. So another thing that this um, FK transform, I mean, it creates this point transform, but you can also see what it looks like if you switch it off. So let's just view that um, component in the, the viewport. You can see if I switch this off, you'll see how the graph updates and my viewport updates. So you can see now I'm not output and now I'm not outputting my my base skeleton anymore. And you can see it's not reflected in the viewport. So now you can see how this matches up with that. So we're still seeing these controls because they're promoted, but we're not seeing the skeleton. I'm just going to add the the um, promote tran or the uh, point transform again. Okay, so. The next step that we want to take in this rig is we want to create a control hierarchy that we can control the main joints with. Um, so what I'm going to do is instead of like editing this graph and just duplicating these transform objects, I'm just going to create the, I'm just going to update my skeleton to have the controls in there so the FK transform component can do it for me, which is a lot simpler. Okay, so let's go to the skeleton quick. Unlock this. And I'm going to put down a, a wrangle node. And then I'm just going to rename the skeleton joints that I have there. So I'm going to say app name is plus equals to underscore control. Okay. So now if I look at my rig tree, for some reason I've got a ghost joint there. Let's just get rid of that. Um, so if you look at my rig tree here, I've got my root control, mid control, and tip control. And um, for these controls, I, I need to add some shapes as well. So I'm going to use the attach joint geo um, to add some control shapes um, and in this case, I'm not actually changing the controls. So if I look at this auto rig node here, I won't be changing these um, by just attaching geo to it. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going to attach a, sh a control shape to it, which I can then read in the apex graph and then set the controls to be the new, the new shape. So I'm just going to load my control geo in and over here, you can see I've got a control shape, but I've got some nerves 
um, nerves in there as well. So I'm just going to have to convert that quickly um, so it'll work uh, with Apex. Because Apex doesn't like um, primitives, it wants polygon shapes for the for the viewer state. I'll transform that. And then I'll make it a bit smaller. Just as a, like a default scale, it's a little bit large. I just want it a bit smaller. And then I'm going to merge pack. Name that control. And then add that into the shape library of the attached join geo. And then I'm going to just assign those controls. So I've named it control there. So I'm going to say control. Okay. And I think that's pretty much it for the controls. The only thing that I wanted to add here was just some color to the network. So, um, so we can better see which are the the main joints and which are the control joints. So over here, I'm just going to add a color red for the the main joints and green for the control joints. Okay, and then I can merge these together. And plug it in. Let's get some more space here. Okay. Okay, so now let me just uh, give it a quick update. So now we've got those control shapes on there and we can move these around, but you can see um, I still have the control shapes in the middle. I can't actually select these shapes. So that's that's what I was saying is that the shapes that you, you are attaching to the skeleton, that's just data that's coming in with the skeleton. So um, we want to be able to use this data to change the controls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an auto rig control. So just another auto rig component, sorry. And then I'm going to change this to configure controls. So it's going to run a component that will fetch data or set data. So I can actually set the set the controls over here manually, or I can say, well, just fetch the data from the base skeleton. So I'm going to set that to base.scale. As you can see, now it's updated the controls. And if I move these controls away, um, you can see that it's attached to the con to the control skeleton, but not the, the main skeleton. So much easier to select and manipulate. Okay, so I don't really want controls on these guys, so I'm just going to go and clean the um, FK component up a little bit. So I'm just going to say I want um, transforms and rotates on both, but I only want it on the controls. So I'm going to say control star control. So any joint now with a, with a control in the name will now be promoted. So it's assuming that, that any control will be promoted. So um, let's go back to component here. Let's just update these just to make sure everything gets updated properly. Okay, and then I move this, this away. And you can see now I don't have those controls and I've got a nice control hierarchy that I can start working with. So now I want to constrain the main joints to the control joints. Let's just have a look at this um, this graph again. So in order to constrain them, uh, what I'll have to do is plug the X form of the, the control node into the X form input of the, the, the node that I want to control. So you're essentially doing a, a, a position constraint or transform constraint rather. So to do a transform constraint to connect these two together, I just have to plug that in and I can create a component that can do this for me so it can be automatic. And in this case, it doesn't feel like it makes a lot of sense to create a whole script to do all the plugging in. But if you have 100, 100 controls and 100 joints and you need to manually plug them in, that's, um, that's going to be a little bit painful. So let's set up a, com a component to do that. Okay, so for that, I need another auto rig component. And then this time I'm going to use a apex edit graph. 
is I want to create create a new graph. And this is going to be my component. And I want to plug all this in and I want to set this to use second input. So now it's going to use this second input as my as my script that I want to run on the um, on the node. Okay, so if we look at this output now, you can see here we can see the graph here we can't see anything. So what's happening here is that I haven't actually done anything with that graph. So it's just it's like a dead end. Uh, what I need to do is I need to do a pass through or initialize this graph and then I can make some edits to it. So I'm going to quickly initialize that so you can see what that looks like. So first we need the subnet input and then we need a subnet output. And I'm just going to clean up these names, palms and output. Okay. And then I'm going to extract the character graph. So you, you're essentially loading the graph into this, um, into this graph. So you, the, the, you're loading the rig graph into this graph so you can actually fetch and change nodes in the graph. So what I'm doing here now is like specifying the, the rig name. So on the component, um, you're going to be fetching the actual rig name. So it's called rig name. And I'm bringing in the character geometry. So the character geometry will be all the pack primitives that are in this um, in this rig. And the rig name will just specify what I'm bringing in and that's base.rig. Okay, so now when we're done with that, I need to update that character. So I'm going to update the character graph, plug in the name, the graph and the character mesh and then output the character mesh. Okay, so now you can see it's updated. And if we look at the graph here, it's just it's just um, basically doing a pass through at the moment. So it's like bringing the graph in and outputting it again, exactly like it used to be. So now that we've got the graph coming in, we can do some stuff to it. So we want to connect the controls or we want to constrain the joints to the controls. So the first thing I want to do here is just make a little bit of a template. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger so we can see clearly. And then I just want to make a template so we can see what we want to do. So this is a silly example, but um, when you work with a larger, larger um, component, like this is not such a bad idea. Just creating a little bit of a template so you know what you're doing. So put a root and root control. And then what we want to do is plug the X form into that one's X form. That's, this is exactly what this component is going to do, but it's going to do it automatically. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find all the control nodes. So I'm going to say find nodes. And this will be the nodes that are in the graph, um, in the rig graph. So we fetching that graph. I'm going to promote this pattern. So I can set it on my, on my auto rig component. So I'm going to quickly do that. So if I select this and I update the parameters, then now you'll see I've got this pattern field that I can um, enter a string into. And what I want to do is I want to find all the nodes with control in it. So that's what that's going to find. So now I basically have a list of all the nodes um that have control in their name so all the control nodes so now i'm going to do a for loop over that or for each sorry for each and it's an apex node id and a for each end like that okay let's make a little bit more space here Okay, so now each of these elements are one of those control nodes. So what I want to do is I want to find the name of this um, of this transform object and just strip away control. And then I can automatically find the node that it needs to connect to. So I'm going to say 
find nodes. We'll just find node. Um, and we'll use that we'll use that to find the, the final node. And then we're gonna say um, node data. That's the one we want. And then you can see we need the graph. So let's bring the graph into the loop so we can use it. So I'm gonna say graph. And then I'm supposed to find the graph. And this is the, the control node that I wanna read the name from. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strip this control out of it. So I need a replace, string replace. And I'm gonna plug the name into the input. And if you press P, you get the parameters. I'm gonna say star underscore control. And then it will replace it just with whatever the star was in front of the control. So it'll be root underscore control. Now it'll just be root. And that will be the path for the node that we wanna find. So we wanna find the node that's called root so I'm gonna plug that in here, plug graph in. And now we basically have the control node over here as an element, and we have the, the joint that we wanna control. And all we need to do now is just plug them into each other. So I'm gonna do a, a find and connect. And then I'm gonna plug the graph in. And the destination node is the the joint I want to control, so this one. So that's the destination. And this is the, the roots, the control that I want to go from. And that's this uh, search node. And what this is going to do is it's going to find the ports on there. So it's going to find a specific port on there and plug it into another port. So I can say, because they're both called xform, I'm just going to say xform and I'm going to say xform over here. So now it'll plug those two into each other. So let's uh, let's export this, name that graph as well. And then I'll just output this graph. So just to go over this quickly, so the graph is coming in and it's continually um, running through um, through this whole network until the end. And uh, sometimes just be wary of this. Like sometimes you miss one of these inputs and then your graph won't output and you're wondering why it's not working. It's maybe because you're missing, um, missing a f like the flow is broken of, of, uh, of your graph. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the output that we're getting. So now this is the, what this order, what this component has done now. So if you look at this, you can see the control is now plugged into the root and same with the mid and the tip. So everything's plugged in nicely. And so what this means is now we can go to this auto rig component and we can just select this control and you'll see all the joints will now move together. So you can't clearly see the, the um, capture skeleton yet, um, but we will in, in a moment. So you can see it's all working nicely. Okay, so then the last thing you want to do is um, now that we've got the controls connected, we've got the skeleton, we want to add a bone deform. So I'm going to add another auto rig component. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to plug that in and it should automatically um, fill out all this information for you. So you've got the point transform geo, the base shape, base skeleton and base uh, base shape for the output geo. So if we look at this um, in the in the network, let's just see if we can like reset this. There we go. So now we've got the with the bone deform and that's going into the oh we've got the point transform that's going into the bone deform uh, using the rest geo and the uh, rest skeleton and then that's going to base.shape. So now that we've got this base.shape in the output, we should be able to see it in the viewport. So as you can see here, now I've got my controls and I can control this thing and the mesh is also being deformed. You can just hide the controls if you want to see the, the final mesh. 
Okay, so now that we've got our skeleton set up, let's build a subgraph. Uh, a subgraph is like a HCA that you can use in, in Apex, so you can access it in the tab menu. Uh, but first we need some logic that we can put into that subgraph. So let's um, let's build a squash and stretch setup. So I'm going to use the, the root and the tip uh, for, my, for the, my main controls, and then I'm going to drive the, the scale and position of the mid control. And for this to work, I'm just going to have to change the hierarchy a little bit. So I've got my, my tip is still parented to my mid control, and I'm going to get some dependency loops here if I'm, if I'm going to be driving this midpoint using the tip. So let's go to the skeleton. I'm just going to add a reparent, or a parent, sorry. And then what I'm going to do here is just first unlock that. And then I'm going to parent the tip to the root. Okay. So now if we look at this uh, last component, I press enter, like I can see that now the parenting has changed. And that's what's nice about components is that like once you set them up, it'll run through this whole network and everything will still, still connect up and work, uh, even though you're changing the hierarchy upstream. Okay. So Let's build our rig logic. So I'm going to use the unpack folder again. So this is just the rig. And then I'm going to do an edit graph so I can actually change the graph. Okay, let's make this larger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, the midpoint between the root and the tip first. So let's do a lerp and plug the X form into A that X form into B and set this value to 0 0.5. And then I'm going to plug that into the mid control because I want to be able to drive this control, but also, you know, control it after it's been set. So let me just show you what it looks like if I just constrain it and what happens in the viewport. So first I need to pack that folder back in. So I've got my rig outside outside of the main stream here, so I need to pack it back in. So I'm just going to say base.rig. So now it'll overwrite the, the rig that's in there with this new edited one. I'm going to press the pose button so it can create a scene animate node for me. Okay, so now if I move it, you'll see that the position's being set and that's great, but I can't actually move this control. It's um, it's constrained. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to calculate the local uh, transform for that um, for that new position uh, based on the root uh, control as a parent. And then I'm going to set that to the rest local of this mid control so I can still drive the control after it's being set. So I'm going to do an extract local. And then I'm going to, I want this position and I want it to calculate the, the local based on this parent on the root. And then I'm going to set this rest local over here and unplug the X form. Okay, so if we go back here, you'll see now I can move this. Oh, let me just reset the animation state. We can move this and we can update that midpoint, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so now we want to do the scaling. Uh, for that, I'm just going to calculate the distance between the two, uh, between their um, deformed position and their rest position. So I'm just going to do an explode here, explode transform, get the local transform for the root, and get the local transform for the tip. And then I'm going to do a distance from their transforms. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to get the rest uh, rest transform. So the rest local for that one, rest local for this one. Now all I need to do is just get the difference between it. So subtract these two floats from each other. And if this value is now at rest, it's going to be zero. So I don't want the scale to be zero. So I'm just going to add a float and set that to one. Okay. So this value will most likely, if I if I move it too far, it's going to probably scale below zero. So I want to um, just clamp this float value 
I don't actually want that um, scale to go below a certain value. So I'm just going to say 0.2 over here, and I'm going to say 1 or 10 over here. So 0.2 for min, 10 for max. And then I want to convert this from a float to a vector. So I can create a, a scale value out of it. I'm just going to scale the X and Y axis, and I'm going to leave the Z axis alone. Just set that to 1. And then I'm going to build my transform. Plug that into scale. And now you've got a little system that calculates the scale based on the distance. And I've got my position in between the two joints, and I just want to multiply these together. So I'm multiply my local transform to my scale. And then I'm going to plug that into rest local. Okay. So now if we reset this, you can see if I move this now, we'll get scaling. Um, it's the wrong way around, so let's just quickly edit that. And I can just do that by flipping the subtraction here. Reset, move, and now you've got scale. And it stays, um, stays at uh, 0.2 for its scaling when it gets too large. Okay. So let's go back to the graph. Now we need to make a subgraph out of this. So we've got our we've got our bunch of nodes here, but it's uh, it's very messy, and you're not going to want to create this every time you want to do a, a scale setup. So what I'm going to do now is just um, collapse this into a subnet. So press Control C, and then you can see, or like, just off of the bat, like you can see, it's a lot cleaner. And if this is only if this is the node you have to deal with for squash and stretch, then it would be way nicer to to work with. So I'm just going to jump in here and change some of these names just so it's a bit um, easier to see. So I'm just going to say X form A. X form B, local X form A, B and B. Okay, and then for my output, I'm just going to say X form. Okay, so now we've got our network. Let me just uh. Minimize that, and you can see it's updated it now. It's got the new names, and it's unplugged itself because the naming is different. But um, essentially, if you just plug these in again, it um, it will work. So now I've got my um, A control and B control, and I can plug them in here. But let's create a subgraph. So to do that, I'm just going to isolate this node. So I'm going to use a blast because these are all points. I'm just going to delete by point. I'm going to say, let's first name that joint, oh, this um, this node. I'm just going to name it Squash. And then I'm going to delete that one. So I'm going to say delete name equals Squash. And you can see now it's gone, so I'm just doing delete non-selected, and I've got, I've got it isolated like this. Then what I'm going to do is just pack it into a folder. And I'm just going to set this... Um, to be squash. Um, I'm not going to pack this output. I'm just going to leave it as is, and I'm not going to give it a type. It's just an easy way to name to name that primitive. And then I'm going to do a rock output geometry, and I'm going to save that to my hip directory. So hip apex graph and then squash dot bgo. Okay, and then I'm going to save that. Okay, and now we need to reload our Houdini session for that to, to update. So I'm going to quickly do that. Okay, so now we've loaded that scene. Um, let's go have a look in our Apex graph. So now we've got our subnet over here still, and we should be able to press tab and do squash. And there you go. So now we've got our very own um, tool that we can use in Apex, and we can plug that in and it, um, it'll just work. Um, 
another thing you can do now with this and why you're doing these subgraphs um, is that you can use a component node to add these and plug them in. So um, I'll be going over some of those uh, add nodes in the chicken rig. Now that we know a little bit about components and subgraphs and how to set up a rig, let's look at how the chicken was set up. So I'm just going to go over the elements quickly. So just the capture mesh, the capture skeleton, the control skeleton, which is derived off of the capture mesh, and then the pose shapes that I'm going to be using to drive the eyes with. Those then get all packed up. So base shape, base skeleton, and pose skeleton. Over here, I'm creating an FK transform again to initialize the rig. So you can see, I go into the view state, pressing enter. Um, this will create the transforms for my for my skeleton and uh, my point my point transform and um, output output my skeleton and what I'm doing here is like before, I'm just um, outputting the controls and I'm excluding some of the controls that I don't want to see uh, in the viewer state. And as you can see here, like it's a little bit large because the chicken, chicken is small, so the controls will be um, overlapping a lot. So what I'm doing here is just adding configure controls node and scaling it to 0 0.2 and I'm applying that to all the controls. And as you can see here, I'm not using the guide skeleton for this or the guide source um, because I'm going to be setting up the, the control shapes a little bit later. So then we create our burn deform and this is still uh, set to default. So it's just adding that burn deform node. And then over here, we're connecting our controls like we did in the demo. And I'm just connecting all the controls and excluding the twist joints. So exactly like we uh, like we set up in the component demo. So let's have a look at that rig. So here you can see we've got a lot more nodes in here, and um, this is the reason why we are using components uh, component scripts to set up all the the rig logic and to plug nodes into each other and add new nodes. Um, it just becomes way simpler um, to set up. Uh, a single component than it is to manually uh, change the rig every time something updates upstream. So initially the components might look very intimidating and complicated, but it, um, it becomes a lot simpler uh, later down the line. Okay, so here I've got a set rotation order uh, from Atrib, and this is a good example for how to fetch data uh, from the skeleton and then set that on the transform objects or whichever object you want. But in this case, I'm fetching the rotation order attribute that I'm setting on the skeleton up here. So here I've got my rotation order and I've set it to three and I get that value, the rotation order value from a rig pose. And you can just look at this value over here. So if you get to this drop down, this is the rotation order value that you can get. And this is also your transform order. Okay, so now that I've set that value and I've set it on the on the foot controls, um, I'm going to show you how I actually set that on the transform object. So let's have a look at this uh, component. So in here, I'm initializing the the um, the components. So I'm bringing the rig in and I'm updating the rig. And over here, what I'm doing is I'm getting the the base skeleton from that character primitive, and then I'm looping over all the points in it. And then getting the name for, for each of those points to find the node that I want to apply the data to. And then I'm getting the rotation order attribute and then building a dictionary, which I then update that node with. So over here, you can see my rotation order and I'm plugging that dictionary into the palms, which will update that node. Over here, you can see there's that rotation order that I'm setting. And finally, I'm updating it. And then let's go have a look at uh, what's actually happening on the nodes. So to view these nodes, I'll just show what that looks like. If you just view this graph again, 
as you can remember, it's um, it's quite daunting as there's a lot of transform objects and to find the right one can be quite tricky. But because this, this is all geometry, so if you have, look, have a look over here, it's all just geometry and it's points with name attributes on it. And the name attributes uh, match the transform object name. So what I've done is I've built a little subnet where I can give it a group and it will isolate um, the two nodes that I want to, that I've specified here and whatever is connected to it. And to explain how I'm doing that, I'm just going to dive in here. Um, I unpack the folder and then I group uh, those two controls by name. And then I do a group expand, which will which will um, find all the nearest points connected to it by a primitive. And the way that Apex um, knows what's connected to each other is that each point um, has vertices on it, which will be the connected ports. And then each, each primitive um, will be the, the wire in between those ports. So because I know that they're connected like that, I can expand the group and I can find all the connected nodes. So now if I do a layout over here, I just delete that group, do a layout, and I can see um, now I've got my two nodes and whatever they're plugged into. So nice to see them in context rather than just isolating them. Okay, so now, now let's look at that attribute. So if I press P and I scroll down, you can see over here I've got my rest local that's been set. And I've got my rotation order, which is now set to three. So the default, if I select the control, or the root control, you'll see that that default is zero. So now I can, I can just update that um, parameter up, up here, and um, any rotation order on any of the controls will be set for me. Okay. So now let's get to the legs. Okay, so this leg is a normal smooth IK setup um, on the on the inside. Uh, the difference is that I'm adding a automatic pole vector. So you can see I've got my control joints, I've got my driven joints, just like the smooth IK, and then here I've got my pole vector and a override IK tip. Uh, this will just control. Um, We'll add an extra transform object to the tip of the, the IK so I can control that individually. So for the auto pole vector, how that works is that um, what I'm doing is I've, I'm getting a midpoint between the root and the tip, and I'm setting that, that pole vector. So if I now, if you have a look at this control over here, if I just move, if I just enable the right leg, you can see that now that control has jumped up to here. So it's finding that midpoint and then offsetting it by minus uh, 0.4. So if I make this uh, 0.2, you'll see that it'll move closer to the middle point or where it used to be. And if I make it 0.4, it'll move back to that position. And the up vector will just determine in which, which, um, uh, which axis it needs to move forward. So like if I go minus one over here, you'll see the leg will flip. Okay, and then to show how that works, let me just select the leg here. So the foot's not con um, connected yet, so um, we just we're just looking at what ha what's happening with the leg. So you can see that that pole vector is now always sitting nicely in between um, the root and the tip of the IK, and it'll also rotate uh, in the plane of the IK. And we can also move it, obviously. Okay, so. Let's have a look at uh, what this network has generated before we go into the component. So I'm going to use my viewer here. And then I'm going to change this name here to uh, the name on the component that I've set. Okay, so change that and say star. Okay, so um, what, what's happening here? Let me just make that a little bit larger. So I'm going to work backwards so you can just see what it's affecting and then uh, work my way backwards. So here I've got my, my hip and my knee, and that's being controlled by the smooth IK. Uh, the tip is not connected because I'm actually driving that with another control. So 
here you can get the, the twist driver control. So here's that look at. And the look at's being driven uh, by the rest local um, from this pole vector blend, which will blend between a that lip position between the root and the tip and the a position that is connected to the pelvis so like a parented position so i can can i can i can blend between either having the pole vector attached to the pelvis or blend to uh, this automatic pole vector okay so this look at control i'm going to be using a lot throughout this um this rig uh, it basically just does a look at with a root offset for you so in this case i'm not actually using a root offset i'm just um i'm overriding it so it's just doing a straight look at but it just makes sure that the root and the tip of um of these two controls um are always uh, aligned and looks at looks at each other so when i do a loop um i won't get any flipping okay so now for the ankle look at so I'm just going to select the eye look at the bottom here so we can these are all using the same the, the same component so I'm just uh, it's just feeding through so this one's going into that one that one that one that one so it's using all the same component it's just a neat way to organize it okay so now looking at the this ankle look at it's it's look, using that look at control again inside and it's just calculating the the offset to this pole ve vector because i want the pole vector to be over here but i want this um, ankle rotation to stay the same so it will calculate that offset so i um, so i don't have to worry about um, it actually shifting its rotation and to show what that does um, i'll select the ankle r control if i change that root aim amount to be um, completely aiming at the at the uh, pole vector without that uh, root offset you'll see that this is what it'll actually look like so that's not really what i want so i just want that um, that rotation to stay exactly the same doesn't matter where i put the pole vector and now it'll be uh, working as as expected and in the parameters here you can see i've got my root control and tip control and this will just work out the the look at between a root position and a tip position and then i'm setting um, a driven control uh, based on the roots child so like there'll be another control under the root which will then actually be driven um, to uh, to drive the tip so that's the look at control uh, let's just look at the eyes quickly and over here you can see i've got my um, Root, root aim amount set to one uh, for that for this eye over here and if I set this to zero you'll see it it's going to flip around because that's its original rotation but I wanted to override that rotation completely so I just wanted to set it to one and you can see it's doing what it's supposed to do okay now for the leg twist joints um, you can't really see what it's doing in the in the actual viewer state so i'm just going to have a look at this component and i'll just walk through a little template that i've set up uh, so with the the normal network where i'm adding nodes and i'm setting dictionary data and adding the twist on twist node so over here so this network here is doing exactly this so what this uh, what this twist is doing is it's calculating a, a looped position between the root and the tip and I'm setting that bias so it can be 0.3 and 0.66 you know like how you would um, uh, get the, the the different values between different joints so imagine this is my root and tip I would get my my position over here and my position over here based on their rotations and um, I'm then just doing a look at to line up those um, those twist joints so they don't rotate uh, weirdly when uh, this uh, uh, this node changes its position. So they'll always align very nicely to uh, to the to the tip. So that's what this twist is doing. Um, it's not a very procedural setup. I'm going to definitely change it in the future. Um, it can only handle two joints at this stage. So I want to be able to have 
as many joints as I want and um, they should just uh, twist properly. So for the toe meta, uh, what this uh, component is doing is it's creating a, a ghost parent joint. So if I just select this parent, like you can see, I've got my, my look at control over here for the, for that, for this joint. And I'm not actually um, rotating the parent of this one. I've created a, uh, a in-between transform, uh, transform called the FK transform. And then I'm using that transform to now set the, the rotation of this one. So it's essentially like uh, changing the pivot of it and then rotating it. So I didn't have to set up multiple joints. And this is really nice for, and, and what, I, what I originally set it up for was for the eyes. Um, but then uh, because, I, because I've got so many joints and I didn't want to create multiple roots, but then I opted for the, the blend shape method for the eyes. So, um, so I end up, ended up creating all those roots for that. Okay, so that's the toe meta. And you can see in here, you can just give it a control list so you get one root. And you give it all the controls you want to, uh, want that, uh, want to use that root. And then um, it will automatically set up the, the look at constraints for you. Okay, so then for the spine and the neck, um, this is uh, very similar to the normal um, normal spine. The normal spine is way more procedural than this one. Uh, the only difference with uh, the normal spine setup and this one is that um, I've got squash and stretch built into this one. So I had to limit it to four joints. So you can't you can't have five joints for this spine. You can only have four. Um, and uh, but we've got this uh, we've got the squash and stretch set up. So I'll just quickly show what that's doing. So if you move it, so it's set to very subtle over here. So if I change this value to say minus one, it will now scale down significantly. So you can see there it's actually doing a proper proper squash. So that's what the spline is doing. Okay, then for the face pose blend. Um, what I'm doing here is, like I said before, I'm doing a blend shape. So I'm just fetching all the all the poses from that skeleton, uh, from the pose skeleton, and I'm doing a weighted blend um, as packed primitives on them. So to better explain that, I'm going to show uh, the setup up here by the actual pose shapes. So here I've got my uh, bone deform. And I've got my primitives coming in. So here's all my pack primitives. And I'm just setting the weight attribute on one of these primitives to drive that, um, that blend. And what I'm blending is, and let's just have a look at the blend shape here. I'm blending the local transform. And I'm setting the pose blend ID it's just, uh, just to um, be able to know what, what point I'm blending. And then over here, I've just set this um, this multi palm up to be uh, to to have one input that I'm setting to one, and this will make sure that that um, all those weights are blended in. So the trick with this though is you can't just blend the local transform and it'll deform this uh, the skeleton. So the trick is to compute the transform. So compute world from local. And um, this will this will make it so that this blend shape actually works. So if I switch this off, you'll see and nothing nothing will happen. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, face pose blend and have a look at what that network's actually generating. So here, I mean, if you look at the parameters, you can just see the face the uh, pose joints that I'm jo uh, blending with my blend group, my point ID that I'm setting and the, the, the folder that I'm using for the blend shapes. Okay, so over here, I'm just gonna set this because that name is face. So I'm just gonna set this to face. Okay. And you'll see that there's, there's a lot of extra joints that are coming in because they're all called face. But uh, the ones that we wanna be looking at that is this um, face prim weights. So this is like the um, the attribute wrangle where we were setting all our weights on 
or our weight attribute. So it's setting a uh, the weight attribute by name. And it's using that um, pose. So if we look here, it's using that pose skeleton geometry um, to set those weights on. And then that goes into the um, into the array. That goes into the plane shape. And then we're computing the transform just like the setup before. And uh, here, the only difference is we actually have to fetch that local transform and then set that onto our face I uh, joints uh, using the rest local because we still want to be able to control this joint afterwards. Okay, so that's the basic setup on that. Um, in here, you can see our component. You can see uh, where I've set up the dictionary for that blend shape. So this is just like before, we're just creating all those nodes. Um, here I'm setting up the dictionary. And as you can see, this is what a multi-palm uh, setup would look like. So I've got my, my blend one value, my blend two value, so the hash is just the number. And then I've set this to one, and then I'm building that dictionary array. And then that's going into the build dictionary as n blends. And then I'm setting that on the parameters of the pose blend shape. Another thing to note is um, I've got all the names set up for the parameters that I'm exporting. So um, we can have a look at that quickly again uh, over here. So I've got all these names over here and they promote it nicely with the correct names and the weights are also set up exactly the same. So all these names need to be set. So what I've done there is I'm looping over that um, that pack geo. So uh, over here I'm using the base dot pose. Uh, just a note: uh, the find character element is a better better node to use for this. Um, that's a newer node. I was using this node uh, when I was building this rig. So, but here we're getting the base pose, and then. I'm looping over each of those uh, those primitives and getting their names and then using those to promote uh, the parameters and set the attributes uh, on the weight uh, uh, attribute from uh, from prim. So this one, set prim attributes. Okay. So now, now that we've got this um, face setter, uh, let's have a look at the the pose, uh, the, the controls. So in the settings here, you can see I've got all these different axes. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to take one of these controls, like this one, and it's going to take one of the axes and map it to a float value that I can use for the weights. So here you can see I'm mapping uh, I pose lid upper L control, and that is the one that I'm selecting at the moment. And I'm mapping it to Y negative. So if I move this one in Y negative, we'll see that it's uh, that it's actually driving that weight attribute. So that is what um, th what this node is doing. And internally, uh, let's just isolate those nodes so we can see what we're creating. I'm just gonna isolate this node. So that's all we want to see. Over here you can see now I've got this, it's overridden one of the one of the parameters. So see that they're all exposed to these float values. But in order to drive these, I need to I need to have a control attached to it. So I either need an abstract control or I need a normal transform objects uh, parameter to be able to drive that. So here I'm using the I uh, pose lit up L control and I'm piping it into my re remap subgraph. And in here, I'm just splitting out all the different um, uh, float values and I'm remapping them to be absolute values. Uh, so I can remap the negative values to be positive um, and clamping them. And then piping that into a, the float value on the face prim weights. So that's what this uh, what the setup is doing, and if I go down the stream here, you can see how nice this is now. Like I just set up one component, and I can apply it to multiple things. So I just 
keep on adding it and adding it. So it looks like a lot of nodes, but all it is is just um, separate parameters for the same component. So over here you can see now I've plugged all of them in. Okay, so now that I've got that set up, let's just have a look at what that's doing. And now if I select one of the face controls, you can see it's driving those joints uh, using a blend shape. And this one will do the blink, and this one will do the angry, angry and sad. Okay, so now for the IKFK blend, what I'm doing here is, and I'll show this in the stash, because it's a little bit simpler to explain. I'm not going to go through the whole component, but um, I'll explain what what it's doing. So let's just frame that a little bit larger. So what, what I'm essentially doing is I'm, I want to do a local blend. Uh, so a local transform blend between the FK and these IK controls. And as you can see, I've got these um, FK helper joints. So what this is, is just a, uh, a FK um, hierarchy representing the positions of my IK controls. So I'm overriding these guys' positions by um, by using the the uh, um, IK controls, and that way I can get the a local transform for um, that matches with uh, the FK controls up here, and then I can easily blend them. So it's um it's actually quite a simple setup. It's just a bit of a uh, a brain scratcher. So. Over here, I've got my, um, uh, another thing that I need to mention is with the IKFK setup is that we are creating a um, abstract control. So the abstract control is going to drive the float values uh, for the blend between, uh, between IK and FK. So just like I use the controls for the face up here um, and converting those uh, values, uh, the abstract control will be able to receive float values and then um, update those values uh, based on what I'm doing to the control. So let me just see if I've got my setup here. Okay, oh, let's just view that quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna just view the name over here. So name. And then I'm just going to add that abstract control. So abstract. Oh, okay. So then over here you can see I've got these abstract controls. So what the abstract control does, so remember when I replaced my float values with the, the transform values. So in this case, you can keep your float value there. You just need to feed it into an abstract control. And then you need to give the abstract control a position. So I've created these um, IK, FK, or FK, IK switch controls, which live in my skeleton control hierarchy. And I'm just giving it that position. So this just says where it's, where it's supposed to be and what it's attached to. And this is the value that it's going to be driving. And this value here is also plugged into an actual blend. So you can see in this bias. So that same value is plugged into the bias. This one will just be driving this parameter. So nothing is set up on this control yet. So I haven't set up any um, parameters, but I'll do that in a second. So here I've got my look at control. Uh, the hip look at control will just make sure that the, the hips uh, the hips will stay intact when I do uh, weird things with the, the knees and, and the legs. It'll just keep that rotation a little bit more stable. Okay, so here I've done some cleanup on it, on the rig. Uh, this is not really necessary. Um, if you have a look at the graph here, uh, what I've done is I've just unplugged all the, the controls from the output. So let me just do star over here. If you look at this output, you can see like I've got all these um, 
the, the normal the, the capture joints being deformed by the point point transform. And then if I select the if I disable this, you'll see how many more uh, many more controls we have. So if I enable, I'm reducing it and increasing it. So it's just unplugging the control hierarchy from the, the point transform because I don't necessarily want to actually deform them. I just want to use them to deform their main joints with. So just clean that up. Okay, and now we can actually configure the joints. So over here, it's just a configure uh, configure controls node like I used before um, at the beginning. Um, but what we're doing here is we're actually going to set up all the all the controls for it. So if I press enter into that viewer state, you can see here I've um, specified all the scales and um, like select the name, select the scale, and I can override the shape. So here I've done a shape shape override on the pelvis to make it a box. Um, so here you can set up all those controls. Um, but like I said in the component uh, demo, the attach joint geo method is a much nicer way to set up your skeleton if you have a predefined skeleton that, you, uh, that you've built before you plug it in. Um, but if you create any kind of controls or joints in your Apex network, then this will be a really nice way to set that up. So you can see here I've got my custom controls. So I'll just go in there. Um, here I've just um, added them, to, uh, I've merged them all together. All that this uh, needs is a primitive name. So each control just has its own primitive name and then you can use it uh, use it in the configure controls node. The second one here was just so I can organize which, uh, which nodes are visible and which are not visible. So I can turn visibility on and off on some of them. Okay, and I said we're going to configure the abstract controls later. So I, I put that into the configure control section. Um, so over here, what we're doing is we're setting some um, some values on it, some min and max values, because we're just dragging on the X, so 0 and 1, and then I'm locking that range so it doesn't go past that. So that's kind of what's nice about this um, abstract control is you can actually limit um, how far, how far that, um, how far you can drag it. Um, and then over here, I'm setting the control parameters. The um, I've got my uh, dictionary properties, and I'm setting up all the things that um, that need to be set up for for the actual abstract control. I do have a different example of this whole setup. Uh, let me just jump to the Lucha quickly. Um, in this one, what I've done is I've just taken all those extra dictionary values that I've set afterwards, and I've just included them in the actual in the actual uh, component. So if you go to the IKFK blend of the Lucha, you'll see in here all those dictionary values are all set up over here, and then then you don't have to create them afterwards. So you can see it's a little bit cleaner. Okay, so back to the chicken. Okay, and then over here, I'm just setting some some control colors. But if you're using the attach joint geo method, like the control colors will come through in any case. But um, this is just a nice way to uh, uh, to see how how to uh, manipulate the 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 dictionary data for the control shapes. So here, I'm applying a material to this rig. So like I want to do some tests, so I just want to add a material so um, we can do some animation and actually see what the textures look like. So let me just switch that on. And then over here, what I've done is I've just unpacked this shape. So you have to unpack it first, then you apply the material. And you have to have the material network in the, in the scene that you're in. Uh, and it has to have a relative path. So it's going to look at this path still, so it doesn't matter how, how you set up your, your rigs. This material is not going to go with your rig when you export it, so you always need the mat net in there. And then what I do then is pack it up, and then now I can actually go look at um, the animation state and see see what's happening with my rig. So I can move all my controls and um, test that everything's working and see that the 
Okay, FK is working. And uh, everything works like it should. Okay. And then for your animators, like they're not going to be dealing with this whole graph over here. So what you're doing for them is you exporting the whole rig as a BGO. So this is just a straightforward BGO and that then gets loaded into a scene like over here. So let's just let that load. Okay. So over here I've got my, my lucha and my chicken. And as you can see, I do have a material in there because um, the material is still in my in my network. But um, if it comes in and it's and it's um, gray, uh, you just have to apply the material again. So over here, I've just applied the material, and I've set that um, that matnet up the same way I did uh, with the rig, and then that goes in, and I can animate my scene. And then to output your, your geometry, use the scene invoke. And the scene invoke, you can just say, you can just click on this um, output all character shapes, and then it'll output all the characters that are in there. You can also, um, if you just want the skeleton, you can set this to skeleton. Yeah. So that's the end of the demo. Um, I hope this is helpful and um, enjoy rigging.